Welcome back everybody to AS and A-level chemistry. Today we'll be doing halogenoalkanes. Again, this is a continuation of the organic chemistry series that we started and let's get on with it. Okay, formation of halogenoalkane. So the first step is, the first way you can form it is, to, is through free radical substitution of an alkane or the conditions are UV light and halogen. Um, again, V this does not form a specific uh, halogenoalkane. Anyone can form as we've already seen in our previous videos. Electrophilic addition of alkane, the conditions are just HBr, HCl, chlorine or bromine. Um, in this case, you can form specific halogenoalkanes um, depending on the position of the R group and whatnot. Uh, again, it's just HBr, HCl and Cl2 and bromine. There's no other conditions. To reverse this, to go from a halogenoalkane back to an alkene, the, uh, the conditions are NaOH dissolved in ethanol and heat on the reflux. This is the elimination reaction. The reverse reaction in this case is an elimination reaction. Next up, we have primary halogenoalkane, which is a carbon bonded to X, where X is a halogen. In this case, anytime I refer to X, I'm referring to halogen. The carbon bonded to X has one alkyl group to, uh, attached to it, or you can also say it has two hydrogens attached to the carbon bonded to X. The secondary halogenoalkane, the carbon bonded to X has two alkyl groups, or you can say one hydrogen is bonded to the carbon that is bonded to X. The tertiary halogenoalkane, the carbon, is, the carbon that is bonded to X has three alkyl groups, but has no hydrogens attached to it. I mean, this is important for naming, and when they ask you what is formed, you can say specific. Uh, specifically, it's a primary halogenoalkane, secondary halogenoalkane, or tertiary halogenoalkane. It's also important that you, you're able to recognize this for, new, for the reaction mechanism for this chapter. The reactions of halogenoalkanes. So first of all, before we begin, we need to know what a nucleophile is. A nucleophile is a group of atoms that have a lone pair, so typo, and are, and are attracted to positively charged regions, which can be either partial positive charges or a carbocation. The common nucleophiles are ammonia, which has a lone pair and three hydrogens attached to nitrogen, or um, cyanide ion, which is carbon triple bonded to N, with a lone pair and a negative charge or water. Um, the carbon bonded to X has a partial positive charge because X is more electronegative than carbon and tends to pull the shared pair of electrons away from the carbon, giving it a partial positive charge. This, this makes the carbon susceptible to attack by a nucleophile. Because the carbon has a positive charge and nucleophiles are attracted to regions of positively charged uh, regions, and it's a it's a partial positive charge. The nucleophile will attack the carbon that is bonded to X. The rate of reaction depends on the strength of the carbon X bond. Um, carbon bonded to iodine is the, weak, is the weakest bond and the reaction takes place the fastest. Carbon bonded to fluorine is the weakest bond, sorry, is the strongest bond and has the slowest reaction rate. Um, the bond strength decreases because as from fluorine to iodine, the size of the anion increases. As the size of the anion increases, the, the distance from the nucleus of the anion and the shared pair of electron increases, and the, the attraction between the nucleus and the shared pair of electron decreases because the distance increases, and thus the amount of energy required to overcome the bond decreases and the bond length increases. Okay, the first mechanism is SN2 mechanism. Um, this is for nucleophilic substitution. Sorry, I didn't write this here, but um, for alkenes. We saw electrophilic addition in halogenoalkanes chapter. We'll see nucleophilic substitution. It's a substitution because the chlorine has been replaced by an OH. Nothing has been added. Like no new species have been added. It's just been replaced. That's why it's substitution. For alkenes, it's addition, electrophilic addition because substance or species are added. In, for example, if you add chlorine, chlorine is added. So two, more, two atoms of chlorine is added, hence the addition. So let's look at SN2. S stands for uh, substitution, N stands for nucleophilic, and two, we'll get to two in a bit. Um, so uh, in the primary halogenoalkane, uh, as you can see it, because it has two hydrogens, or it has one R or alkyl group, um, and, and it's attached to chlorine. So the bond angle is 109.5 because it's a tetrahedral bond. It has four bonds, sp3 hybridized. 
Okay, so you have to mention you have to showcase a partial positive charge here and a partial negative charge because the electrophilic there's an electro negativity difference. The nucleophile, which has a double bond, lone pair, sorry, not a double bond, I meant lone pair, and it will attach the partial positive charge. So you must show arrows uh, that originate from the double, sorry, from the lone pair, and it's attacking the carbon, which has a partial positive charge. Um, the chlorine, and then this bond will uh, heterolytically break, heterolytic fission will take place, and the electrons here will be transferred to chlorine. And hence it has a lone pair and a Cl minus charge. Um, the intermediate step a stage has five bonds. Um, the, the OH bond is forming at the same time the Cl bond is breaking. So that's why they showed in dashed or like broken lines. The and this gives a trigonal bipyramidal complex with bond angles of 90 between the, and the top and 120 from OH and R and Cl. Um, this Intermediate cannot be obtained physically, like it won't be an intermediate that's formed in form of a precipitate or something. And hence it's a one-step reaction and the curve goes as is, is a smooth curve. Regardless of whether it's exothermic or endothermic, it'll be a smooth curve. Okay. Let's look at SN1 mechanism. It's for tertiary halogenoalkane. Um, as you can see, there's three R groups and CX. The heterolytic fission will take place first. Sorry, this arrow is supposed this bond is supposed to break not this one, the bond will break to produce this and uh, to, to X will break off and the lone pairs will be transferred to X as such. It's similar to this reaction here. However, heterolytic fission takes place first in tertiary halogenoalkane. In SN2, the attack by the nucleophile takes place first, then heterolytic fission takes place. However, for SN1 mechanism, heterolytic fission takes place first. And it's a slow, this is a slow step and hence it's a rate determining step. And that's why for SN1 mechanism, um, the rate of reaction is usually only dependent on the concentration of halogenoalkane and not on the concentration of the nucleophile. However, for SN2, the rate of reaction is dependent on the halogenoalkane and the nucleophile. A quick tip, if it says two, that means it's, it, the rate of reaction is dependent on two. And if it's SN1, and since it's one, the rate of uh, reaction is only dependent on one, or substance, which is the halogenoalkane. Um, we know that this is a two-step reaction because you can look at the graph and it has a hump as such. And this is where a carbocation will be formed. And in this in this intermediate stage, um, in this intermediate stage, the bond angle is 120 degrees and it's a carbocation is formed. And this can be obtained, like and what I mean by it can be obtained, it's formed. Um, in this case, the intermediate isn't actually formed. It's just, it takes place simultaneously. There's no, in, it's instantaneous. It doesn't stop at the intermediate stage and then move on. However, in SN1, the intermediate, it's a stop at the intermediate stage, then it moves on. Um, it can, this is seen over here. Okay, so let's compare. The diagrams are a bit off. I'll put a better diagram in the comment section or in the description so you guys can understand. I'm sorry, this is a really bad diagram. I'll put a better one in the description box. Um, reaction mechanism. So let's do a quick comparison. SN1, carbocation intermediate formed has a bond angle of 120. For SN2, the bond angle has, its bond angle is 90 and 120 and has five bonds. However, for, however, for the intermediate over here, it has three bonds. SN1 is a two-step reaction. This is depicted by the graph having a hump or uh, as compared to this, which is a smooth curve. Uh, again, SN2 is a one-step reaction. Like I said, SN1 rate is unaffected by the concentration of NaOH and is only affected by the concentration of the halogenoalkane, rate affected by one thing, SN1, rate affected by concentration of NaOH and halogenoalkane, rate is affected by two things, hence SN2. Um, so I'll explain why this is uh, a two-step, uh, sorry, why the rate of SN1 is only affected by uh, one concentration of halogenoalkane. Basically, the entire, everything here takes place really quickly. The nucleophile will attack the carbocation very fast and produce the, um, will produce the product. However, the reactant for, the, for the, the heterolytic fission is the slow part. Hence, despite increasing the concentration of uh, the nucleophile or, or OH in this case, if, if, this, if the concentration of, nuclear, uh, of the halogenoalkene doesn't increase, the number of intermediate steps formed will remain the same. Hence, the rate of reaction will remain the same. 
However, if you increase the concentration of halogen and alkene, the number of intermediate will increase, hence the rate of reaction will increase. Because at the end of the day, if this reaction is slow and you increase the conditions for this, the entire reaction will be slow. Okay, so SN1 is favored by tertiary halogen and alkene due to positive inductive, positive inductive effect of the alkyl groups, which enables a carbocation to form. Primary halogen alkenes cannot form a stable carbocation. Okay, so again, positive inductive effect due to the R groups. They pull electrons. They they donate electrons, causing the charge on the carbocation to decrease, and hence it's much more stable. However, for primary halogen alkene, it can't really form a stable carbocation because the positive inductive effect due to one alkyl group isn't strong. It isn't large enough. Um, and that's and that's why SN one is favored for tertiary. Sorry, SN one is favored for tertiary halogen alkene, and SN two is favored for second uh, primary halogen alkene. Secondary halogen alkenes can take either SN one or SN two, and you're not really tested. You're not really asked that in the in the exam. Reactions of halogen alkenes. Um, just to clarify, if it's a tertiary, you'll undergo SN one. If it's secondary, you'll undergo S. Sorry, if it's primary, you'll go under, undergo SN two. And the rest of that's a mechanism. We'll just look at the uh, reagents and the conditions now. The, um, and it's good to know what the what the nucleophile is. And I'll clarify that as we go on. So halogenoalkane to alcohol, the nucleophile is OH, as you have seen already over here. And that is produced by NaOH aqueous or KO potassium hydroxide aqueous, and then you heat under reflux. So the nucleophile is OH minus ions with a with a lone pair. Okay, halogen alkanes to nitriles. Nitriles are basically a C triple bond N uh, functional group. Um, they are formed by KCN, uh, potassium cyanide, and sodium cyanide dissolved in ethanol. And again, heat under reflux. Um, as you can see, potassium cyanide, sodium cyanide. And the basically to showcase this uh, electron nucleophile, it's this one, C double C N triple bond. You don't need to show the triple bond and the lone pairs on N. You remember to showcase the arrow starting from the lone pair. Uh, for the oxidation of CN, so the nitrile group can be oxidized to COOH. If you put dilute hydro hydrochloric acid, you'll form COOH or carboxylic acid. So, sorry, sorry. Let me let me uh, let me clarify. Um, let me reinstate what I just said. So, for the oxidation of uh, CN to the nitrile to carboxylic acid. So, if it's acidic uh, hydrolysis, you put dilute HCl. And H2SO4. If it's a if it's a basic uh, hydrolysis, will be NaOH and H2SO4. Um, for if you add NaOH, you'll form a salt of an acid or C double bond O and Na. And this reaction is called reaction is called hydrolysis. As compared to the rest, which which is which will be called nucleophilic substitution, this will be called hydrolysis. Um, let's continue with the reactions. So halogen alkene to amine is basically excess alcoholic aqueous ammonia or heat, heat under reflux in a, uh, sorry, this is a repeat, but the reagents are um, aqueous ammonia dissolved in excess, uh, excess ammonia dissolved in alcohol. Uh, excess uh, ammonia dissolved in alcohol, it can also be aqueous. And then the conditions are heat under reflux in a sealed tube. Okay, that's all, we've come to the end of um, halogen alkanes and a majority of our uh, Organic chem is almost over. Uh, next up, we'll have carboxylic acids, carbonyls, and alcohols. After that, we'll be done with um, with all of uh, organic chemistry. If you, uh, we'll probably, I'll try to go through some questions on organic chemistry. And once we're done with organic chemistry, in all, um, I'll create a, a video that summarizes everything and the reactions in a quick and easy way to remember it, um, in in form of a mind map or a PPT or something. Um, I'll be going through some questions if you'd like. Um, yeah, if you'd like us to go through them, just let us know. Um, please, so please consider subscribing if you've been enjoying our videos and it's been helping you. Um, if you have any suggestions, again, leave them in the comment section and I'll obviously I'll try to implement them ASAP. Thank you so much and goodbye.